Hey folks, Will Lopez here, head ambassador at Gusto, back once again with more Form W4 excitement. And today's session is extra fun. I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through completing a W4. There are five major steps of completing a W4. Let's get into it. Okay, step one is interpersonal information. Everyone needs to complete this section and it's really straightforward. All you need to do is enter your first name, last name, social security number, address, city or town, state and zip, and you'll have to select one of these options, single or married filing separately, married filing jointly or qualifying surviving spouse, and head of household. If an employee does not fill out the form, as an employer, you'll be required to calculate their withholdings as single, so you can withhold their taxes at a higher single rate. And that's it for step one. But before we move on to step two, I do need to make you aware of one thing. There's a brief message before step two that says complete steps two through four only if they apply to you, otherwise skip to step five. So what I recommend is that you follow along through steps two through four to see if they apply to you. If they don't, then you can skip to step five, okay? All right. Now we're on to step two, multiple jobs or spouse works. You'll notice that step two instructs the taxpayer to only fill this out if one of the following is true. The person filling out the form has more than one job at the same time, or the person filling out the form is one, married, two, filing jointly, and three, works and has a spouse who also works. If none of these scenarios apply, you may skip this step. If one of these scenarios does apply, complete step two by doing one, but not all of the following. Use the IRS tax withholding estimator. Typically, this tool makes it easier for the taxpayer to calculate withholdings. Go to page three of the form to manually calculate withholdings and enter the result in step 4C on the form. Check the box on line 4C if the taxpayer only has two jobs or if the taxpayer and spouse, who is filing jointly, have two jobs in total, then this box may be checked. This section can be involving, but don't worry, we get more in depth in our multiple jobs worksheet video, so check that out if this section applies to you. Step three, claiming dependents. Single taxpayers claiming dependents with a total income of $200,000 or less, or $400,000 if married filing jointly, are eligible for a child tax credit. If you're eligible, you need to complete this section of the W-4. It's pretty straightforward. You'll need to know how many dependents you plan to claim, both children under the age of 17, as well as other dependents. Then you'll need to do a little arithmetic on the next two lines, multiplying the number of children under 17 by 2000 on the first line, and the other dependents by 500 on the second line. The total of those two lines will go onto line three. And that's it for step three, let's move on. Okay, step four, other adjustments. This is an optional section for various things that an employee may want to account for when considering their withholdings. These areas include line 4A, other income not from jobs. This is for additional income that might not be subject to withholding, like retirement income or dividends. That kind of stuff should be included here. Line 4B, deductions. This line is for deductions other than the standard deduction. This includes all itemized deductions, like mortgage interest and charitable contributions. The greater of the standard deduction or the itemized deduction will help reduce the amount of tax due. The 2024 standard deduction is 29,200 for married taxpayers filing jointly, 14,600 for single and married filing separately taxpayers, 21,900 for those filing as head of household. If this is confusing, don't worry. We cover more on deductions in another video. Finally, line 4C, extra withholding. If you want any extra funds withheld from each pay period, that amount should be included here. Last but not least, step five, signature. If you don't sign, the form is invalid. It's that simple. And that's it, we made it. Remember, steps two and four are a little more involved. So please check out our videos on the worksheets associated with them. I'm Will Lopez, thanks for watching.